Hey guys, it's Casey again from Casey Designs and today um, I'm going to be showing you how to create this business roll-up inside of um, Photoshop. So I found this image from um, Freepik, so I thought maybe I should um, make it to a tutorial for you guys on how to create this entirely from scratch in Photoshop. So um, it's going to be a two-part series, so it's going to be just one part for today which we're going to be discussing how to make this first portion in Photoshop. In the second part will be how to create the second one. Then, the, then there's going to be a third part and the third part will be making a mock-up for the both of them. So without further ado, let's, let's get started. So I'm going to go to Photoshop. So I'm going to be creating a new document. This time around, I'm going to be using an, an A4 document size. Uh, even though it doesn't doesn't look very much like an A4, but I feel okay. A4 should be fine for this. You can always use your specific specific size if you want to, but I'm going to be using A4 for now. So this is my Photoshop. Then I'm going to go to print and then look for A4. It's down here by, this, by the corner. So click on it. And then the resolution, I'm going, to, I'm going to be taking the resolution down. I don't want something as high as this 100 should be fine for tutorial purposes so and then click on create so i'll leave everything at default i'll leave everything at default okay back to a4 so everything here should be at default default is fine so 100 okay then click on create and then we have our work here so maybe I should just um, crop crop some part of this document. The width is just too long. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go to my crop tool, click on the crop tool, and just kind of pull this this way. Yeah, this is fine. Then just take it up here. That's fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is to unlock my background. So unlock my background, and then go drag the image and drop it inside inside of photoshop so just drag and drop this here so i cannot see this in my screen and try and replicate the same thing so but we're only going to be working with just this first one here just this one so here's what i'm going to do so i'm going to um cut out just the portion i'm going to be designing today from this image so i'll go to my rectangular mark u2 Click on that and then just draw a selection around there. The next thing I'm going to do is to put my mouse inside of the selection and right click and then they have your copy. So I'm going to be having a copy of what I'm going to redesign. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on Ctrl T, Ctrl T to bring out my transform tool. Then kind of resize this like so. Click enter position this year so now I'm going to start by creating these complex shapes so I can use I can do, do this in two ways I can either use my pen tool or my rectangular or my rectangle shape tool so but for today I'm using the rectangle shape tool so I'm going to do this way I'm going to use the rectangle shape tool to create this down portion then for the top part I'm going to be using the um, pen tool so, so you guys can learn how to use both tools to create uh, a more complex shape. So, rectangle two. So, I'm just going to um, draw a rectangle like so. So, I want to create this first one down here. This one down here. So, first thing, I'm going to change the color. So, I'm going to click on the fill. Click on this um, color picker. And then... I can click, see, please turn off your caps lock, and now I can click this color here. I'm just doing this so I can visualize my rectangle and kind of adjust it to my taste. So I'll just pull this down here, pull this down here. So I'll always be going back and forth, I'll always be going back and forth to um, see my actual design and then try and replicate it. So I'm going to zoom in here. So I'm trying to create this first part here, this first portion. So let me quickly do that. 
So um, I'm going to zoom in. Control plus to zoom in. Then I'm, I'm, I want to manipulate this var these vertices on this rectangle. So I'm going to go to my um, direct selection tool, which is down here. Open it up, direct selection tool, click on it. Then now I can drag a selection on this corner and pull this here, like so. Click yes to accept that. And then zoom out, control minus. Select here also, drag this all the way here. Okay. Then maybe I'll just pull this downwards a bit. And then um, select this also. And pull this all the way here. Select this also, pull this all the way here. So now I'm I want to add them. Um, I want to um let's see. So I want to visualize them. Um, this down part. Now the image is not so clear, but we'll find a way around this. So I want to create another additional point to still manipulate. So to do that, go to your pen tool, open that the options, and then click on add anchor point. So I'm going to I'm going to zoom in like so. Click on the image and kind of bring it closer. Zoom back out a bit, control minus. Then go back to my add anchor point, add anchor point to. Then um, click on my rectangle. I think I'm going to add a point right about here. So I'll go back to my dress relation to select that point. Okay. Let's see. So now I've added the points here, but you will notice something. So let me go back to my direct selection tool. Okay. Then if I select this and I kind of pull this down, I'm noticing that there's a curve to it. I don't want that curve, though the curve is cool, but I don't want that curve. So for me to break up this um, curve, I need to go to my pen, to, pen tool, then down to convert point to, click on that and then just click on that point. So it's going to convert that point from so it's going to remove the smooth edge flow and then make it a straight sharp line. So that's fine. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is um, selecting the go to my direct selection tool again, select this top part, bring this all the way up, like so. Select this part, maybe bring that around here. Now this is way too much, so maybe around here should be fine. Yes. So you can always adjust it if you want to. So that's fine. So the next thing I'm going to be creating is um, this part up here. So I'm still going to be using an, another. Um, still going to be using another rectangle. Okay, but I feel let me still let me still change this up a bit. So let me select all this and kind of bring it down. Holding down my shift to bring it down like so. Maybe I'll drag this up here. Okay, so then draw another rectangle to shape to something like this should be fine. Then change the color, use something around here. So that's fine. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to be dragging this below my first rectangle. So I'm gonna name this rec low. Okay, I'll rec one. Uh, rec two for this should be fine. Rec two. So click on the rec two and then click on control T. Okay, not that. I think that's the wrong one. So I'm not going to rename this. It should be two. This should be one because I changed the arrangement. So, uh, control T, wrong one again, control T on this, shrink this down, pull this down here, that's fine, 
uh, maybe kind of rotate this like so yes that's fine push this down here go to my direct selection tool again and then just select the points now select this and pull this down here like so select this and then pull this all the way here so that's fine so the next thing i'm going to be doing is to duplicate this same um, shape so to do that i'm just going to right click duplicate layer and then name this to three click ok then shift this with my move tool shift this aside Control t to go to my rotate my transform tool kind of rotate rotate this okay click enter go to my direct selection tool select this portion kind of make it match here like so so i'm going to zoom in to kind of get a closer view on that so i can make it perfect so zoom in here kind of make it match kind of so yeah fine that's fine so i'm going to zoom out again this time around i'm going to be changing the color so i'm going to go to my move to back to rectangle then i can see the fill why because i don't think if i go to my properties i can't see the properties of the shape anymore because it has been deformed so for me to find my properties again maybe just fewer properties i need to go to my rectangle because it's still a shape then from here i can just change the color to something close to here so i can easily identify them yes fine okay so i'm going to be doing the next shape so you already know that i'm going to duplicate this so this time around i'm going to be using the ctrl j on my keyboard ctrl j and then ctrl t and i just rotate this pull this by the side kind of zoom in to get a closer view yes that's fine i'm holding my space bar to pan so let me zoom out ctrl minus to zoom out okay then back to my address the rest selection tool select that vertex push that in uh now maybe i'll just um let me get a closer view on that and then just push this closer yeah that's just that's fine so i'm going to zoom out then go to my dress selection tool again select this part let me make this wider okay okay that's fine so you can always make this very perfect if you if you want to but for now i'm going to, I'm going to leave this as it is so now i'm going to change the color so i can just double click on this thumbnail and kind of get something different so i can easily identify it now that's fine that's fine for now so the next thing i'm going to be doing is the other other portion down here so as you can see it's not so difficult to do so i'm just going to draw another rectangle down here then this should be below then go to my direct selection tool again maybe i'll just select everything and just kind of go to my move tool kind of push this down here like so back to my the selection tool select this point and kind of move this in here so maybe i'll get a closer view on that so i can make it neater select that again and kind of push this in here okay that's fine so control zero to zoom back out and then I think I'll just duplicate this, Ctrl J, pull this up, okay, then Ctrl T, kind of flip this horizontally, kind of rotate this downwards, okay, on the enter key, 
zoom in and then I can easily match this push this down here kind of use my arrow keys and then go to the selection to select this point and just push this down inwards and drag this down here okay then change the color so I can easily identify it so we're done for this um, down portion uh, maybe I'll just take this down a little bit more it's too high yeah perfect so that's fine so the next thing I'm going to be doing is to work on the top part so uh, I'm just going to go to my zoom tool kind of zoom in here control minus to zoom back out a little and then now I want to show you a trick if you turn on this auto select you'll be able to select any any layer any sh any um any object that's been selected here will, will automatically reflect here the selection will jump down to that layer if I click yeah you see the selection jumps to that layer but at times i usually have some little issues trying to move and then i accidentally touch click on another layer and then i accidentally move that layer inst out instead but the way i found to see leverage on these two but without keeping it on permanently is to turn it off and then whenever i want to select any layer or any shape from here to inversely select the layer from on my layer panel all i have to do to bring back this auto select is to click on my control key as you can see control key turns the auto select on so click and hold the control key then i can just select the particular um object i want in my workspace then it, it will automatically jump to that layer for me so and then i can easily move it out easily why? Because if I go back to auto select and, and, and auto select is turned on, now if I, now I'm on this picture layer, this image layer, but if my mouse is outside that entire shape and I try to move, now I'm moving the wrong layer because auto select actu actually selects that layer that the mouse is on and then it it's performs that move operation. But I don't want that. That's the reason why I, I prefer turning it on myself to actually control it to actually control it by myself holding the control key so i'm going to turn, the, turn this off and then manually control it by clicking on the control key and then i can easily select the layer i want and then go out of that object and then i can still move it so i'm sure you get, get the idea already so let's carry on so i'm going to move this down so this time around i said that i'm going to be using them the pen tool to create this shapes here so let's do that so i'm going to start by creating this um the one at the back so before before i do that let me select all these ones down here then group them and click on group layers and then name this um rec name is cap rec bottom okay so then back to um the next shape so i'm going to use the pen tool so i'm going to open this up i can either use the pen tool or the polygonal polygonal lasso tool whichever one you prefer but let me use the pen tool instead so i'm going to use the pen tool you know what let's okay let's let's use the pen tool then we're still going to use the polygonal lasso tool so i can show you guys different ways of creating the same art with different tools so let's start with the first one up here so something like i just tap so once you tap it to create straight lines for you but once you tap and hold you get curvy lines so i don't want any curvy lines i only want straight lines so i go all the way outside so i don't really care if it's outside because it won't be showing in my final export so this is fine i've made the first shape so the next thing i'm going to do is to put my mouse inside of this or maybe outside then make selection click ok now your selection and um, um, feather radius should be on zero so should you have sharp edge so create a new layer and then go to my foreground color and just pick this color on top here okay click okay and then alt backspace to fill it up 
cool so ctrl d to the select and the next thing i'm going to do is to um, use the polygonal lasso to, to draw the next shape okay so the next the next shape should be below this first one so what's my polygonal lasso to because the, the polygonal lasso to allows me to draw straight lines also like pen to but it doesn't give me, it doesn't give me the privilege to draw curvy edges or curvy curvy lines like the pen tool. But I'm sure, I'm sure you guys get the idea. So I'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to start by clicking up here, then um, down here, then all the way here, like so, then all the way here. Okay. Then I can just go outside and then go back to my initial points, click. Make, make the selection for me then i'll create a new layer go back to my foreground choose a different color then alt backspace to fill that selection up ctrl d so the next thing i'm going to be doing is um okay now it looks like my shape is just too big so i'm going to select both of them ctrl t and just pull this up like so let's see like so and kind of push this out so that's fine enter so let's use the same polygonal lasso to, to draw the next shape so it should definitely be below also so let's start by drawing something around here and here and um, here so this is going to be two separate shapes two separate shapes so yeah then go back to my initial points then go back to foreground choose a color click ok and then create a new layer and then fill that up ctrl d to the select and then i'm going to draw the next shape also so i'm going to start drawing from down here so um yeah from down around here yeah. so quick go back in here yeah. so now i want to do something so i want to put a ruler down there so i can get it perfectly so to bring out the rulers let's go to view then turn on rulers mine is already turned on then i'm going to drag click and drag this down here yeah. that's fine so i'll go back to my um polygonal lasso tool so maybe I'm going to draw, drag another one up here. Yeah, like so. That's fine. So that's fine. So I'm going to go to my polygonal lasso tool, and then just redraw this. Click, click. Okay, because now it's going to snap to those guides. So all the way here yeah. that's fine and then back to my initial points okay that's fine so i'm going to fill this also create a new layer pick a color for this and then hold backspace to fill Control d to the select now that means now i have some little fixing to do so that's fine so Control t and I'll just push this out just a bit. That's fine. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is um this shape down here. So using the same poly poem polygonal lasso too. I'll go all the way. Like so. Click, click, click here and back to the initial points. Create a new layer and then fill this up. New layer and then choose a color for this and then fill this up ctrl d to deselect and then go back go down here let me bring this down create a new layer again polygonal lasso too um okay click here click here click here and then yeah go back to my initial points and then choose a color 
and then fill this up control alt backspace so control d to deselect so control zero to zoom out so let me see my shape so um now it seems like it's way too big that's fine I can always resize this so I'm going to select the entire thing group it group it control G to group name this top rec top rec top control T and then kind of um, pull this up like so that's just fine now I can hold my control, select this, push this inward, select what control, select this, push this inwards, control, select this and push this inwards a bit. So now I've gotten the, sh the uh, main part of the shapes got completed. Let me click on this image and just pull this here. So maybe I still need to resize this bottom one, control T. I'm kind of resize it, take this down. Pull this out, drag this down, then hold control, click on this to jump to that selection for me. Put my direct selection to select that point and just pull that back in. And then that's fine. So the next thing we're going to be doing is um, filling up these images with color, with the original color. Okay, or maybe before we do that, let's make this more interesting and just apply our image, I guess. Okay, uh, you know what, let's, fi let's fix the color first. So let me click on this, the image. I'm going to drag this image on top of everything, on top of every other layer, so I can see it, so I can pick the colors from it. So let me start by um, picking the color. Now I missed one shape. Click on this, dress selection tool, select this, push this back in. So it means you want this part, this last shape down here. Should have done that. So that's easy. I'm gonna use my polygonal lasso too. I'm gonna to zoom out. Control minus to zoom out. And I just kind of fix this where it should be. Yeah, around there. Go back to my initial point. And red box, I'm going to pull this below. Below. Yeah, it's gonna be on top. Yes, on top. And then fill this with a fill, fill this with the color or it's backspace. Ctrl D, good. So, um, zoom in again. Ctrl Zero. And the names are applying their various unique unique colors to them. So I'm going to start with this one down here. So that's the layer there. So I'm going to go to FX gradient overlay. Pull this uh, around uh, here so I can see the image. And then click on this and then pull this here. Then put this back to black and white. Click on the black and choose turn on caps block and choose this dark shade here. Okay. Click OK. Go to the next color. Pick this. That's fine. So I'm going to drag this to kind of favor this more. And I want to darken this color a bit, so I'm going to click on this. Then you see this brightness, this B is for brightness, so I'm going to take that down to around 65. Okay. Uh, maybe it's maybe 50. Then kind of bring this out a bit more like so. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Maybe I darkened it too much. I guess so. so let me use um, 55. That's fine. So click OK. Click OK. I'm going to go to my next shape. So let me use this next one. So FX gradient overlay. OK. Going to overlay for this, and then I'm going to I'm, 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 I'm going to try to be as fast as I can. So gradient overlay. Now I'm using um, my gradient overlay is on linear, is on linear. So go back here, select the dark portion, click here, or click OK. 
and then add another one in the center click here click down here okay maybe i'll just brighten this up a bit so maybe around them um, 93 okay click okay go to the last one kind of use this okay now i still want to create another one down here and then pick this color for this then kind of darken it maybe 70 a yeah, 70 is way too much maybe 75 that's fine okay then i'll click okay so i've done that so the next shape let's use this shape okay click okay here yeah. let's do for this fx gradient overlay push this here again Push this here, gradient overlay. And now please um, take note of my angle. My angle is at minus 21. And my scale is at 100. And then is that the blend mode is at normal also. Please take note of that. If not, you'll be doing the right thing but have, having the wrong results. So um, let me take this back to black and white. So click on this dark portion. Kind of choose the one at the edge, okay. Click OK, go to the white. Kind of choose this brighter tone, but I still need to brighten this up, so maybe I'll just take it all the way up here. All the way here, okay. Uh, and then just maybe I'll just darken this a bit more, like so. Then kind of push this out, okay. That's fine. Then click OK. Click OK also. Go to the next shape. Go to the next shape and then um, FX gradient overlay. Put this here. Oh, it should be the other, the other way around. This should go here. It should go here. And then. Click on this part up here. Click OK. And somewhere around here. That should be fine. Click OK. Click OK. Then now I'll fix that for the down parts. Okay, I mean this other part portion so that over here. So um control click to go to the stop one, FX, gradient overlay, push this all the way here. Select this and then for the first color, I'm going to be using um, this. Click OK. Next one, I'm going to be using um, somewhere around here. Maybe I'll just brighten this up a bit. OK. Click OK. Click OK. Control. Click on the next shape. FX. Gradient overlay. Okay, so maybe I'll just pause this video and then I'll, I'll come back when I'm done with this down part. Then we'll go to the top part. Okay, so I want to show you guys something. So I'll click on this for this down, down shade. Okay, now there's an issue. So let me take this back to black and white. So I can know how the, the direction of my um, colors. So let me put this back to click OK. So I want this for, to flow from... The white should be on top. And the dark one should come from below. So click OK. For the dark part, the dark part is down here. So I'm going to pick this bright spot here. Okay, let me go back here. And then choose this top part up here. Now for this other side, I need to brighten this up. Definitely need to brighten it. Maybe I choose this color from here. Yes. Oh, this. Yes, this should work. Brighten that up. Okay, and brighten that up. Fine. Okay. Click OK. I'm sure you guys get the idea now. So let me just pause and then finish this up. So I'm done with this down portion. So click on this image and bring this down. Control Z. So hold control and click on this image and bring this down here. 
So the same thing I'm going to be doing for this top part. So uh, you guys already know the steps. So I'm just going to finish this up, and then we'll come back and make the rest of the rest of the design. So now we're back. Um, I've done. I'm done um, applying the um, gradient overlay to these other shapes up here. So I don't want to bore you guys with me doing that. Doing that from start to finish. But I'm sure you guys get the idea. So the next thing I'm going to do is to um, add this shape down here and then add the image below. So that's quite easy. So um, now what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the bottom layer. That's for the background. BG. So now I want to apply my image um, to the background. So I'm going to go find um, I'm going to go find an image. Okay. Um, so now I found the image I'm going to use. So let me just drag this to Photoshop. And then Alt, Shift, and Alt to make this quite big. I'm kind of position this here like so. Okay, let me just leave it the way it is. Click Enter. Click on this image and then just hide it temporarily. So I'm having something that looks like this. So, um, so on top of this, my um, image layer, I'm going to create a new layer. Then I'm going to let me turn on this image back on. So I want to create this white part here. To do that, it's very easy. So I'm going to go to my polygonal lasso tool. And then just go all the way here. Then here. And maybe down here and then all the way here. Then back to my initial point. Then I'm going to fill this with white. So I'm going to go back to the default, switch this to white, and then hold backspace to fill that with white. Control D. And then let me uh, go back to my move tool, clicking on the V key, move this aside. I'm going to move this aside like so. Then I want to add drop shadow to this my newly created um, rectangle. So hold control, click on that shape, FX, drop shadow. So reset to default. That's fine. Then I'm going to uh, click on my viewport, on my view, my uh, workspace, and kind of pull this down. So I can easily manipulate the distance, or you can easily come and manipulate the distance, like so. Then this the size is to 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 blow out your to blow blow out the um, shadow. Then let me take this all the way up. Let me make this darker. Then take down the size. Let me reduce your the visibility of the shadow. Something like this is fine. Click OK. Go back to this image. Then now I can see that this um, shape here, these two shapes here, that's a drop shadow to it also. So let me go find them. I'm holding control, click on this. So this is that's for for that and this for this. So I'm going to group both of them so I can apply drop shadow to the both of them. So I, I, will, I only need to apply the drop shadow just once. So group layers, click OK. FX drop shadow. Pull this all the way down here. So now my drop shadow is just too much. Then please turn off use global light because it will kind of inherit your previous operation on the drop shadow so let me turn that off so i can easily manipulate it individually so let me push it back i'll push it back in kind of pull this out just a tiny bit take down the blur maybe i'll just take it out just a tiny bit yeah like so it's fine make it more visible that's fine click ok then for this shape down here also this one down here it does has a drop shadow to it so i'm going to click on it maybe i'll just pull it out a bit more Control t like so click enter fx drop shadow okay and that's just way too much so drag the distance backwards take down the size Something like this should be fine. Yep, something like that is fine. That, that is fine. Okay. Maybe I take out the distance a bit more. Yeah, something like this is fine. 
then what else what else is there that we haven't fixed click ok then the only thing meaning there is um it's just the text okay there's one more thing there you guys didn't notice i'm sure you guys didn't notice that so there are some stray stray um lines here like you have here up here also so let's try and fix that quickly so let me show you guys an easier way of fixing that so let me just um click on this image and turn it off temporarily click on this uh, okay i'll leave it the way it is and then i'm going to go to my rectangle tool so i'm going to go all the way up close this all the way up so i'm going to draw just one tiny um rectangle like so then i'm going to be filling this up with um a gray color so choose this gray click ok mendy is too thick it's just too thick so for the heights i'm going to be using like around four pixels yeah that's fine then um here's what i'm going to do take this up I want to duplicate this multiple times, maybe around, around 13 times. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, what I'm going to do now is go down, go down to the first one, drag this down here, like so. Kind of visualize what's going on in the image, like so. And then go all the way and hold shift and select the top one. Then I'm going to distribute this on the um, on distribute vertical center. So now all the lines get aligned, but the spacing is just too tiny. So go to the, down to the last one, pull this down a bit more, go all the way, all shift, select the top one, then space it down again. Maybe I just space it out just a bit more. Go all the way to the top one. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to control G to group them. Control T. Let's kind of rotate it. Like so. Then bring this below every other layer. Kind of drag this here. Let's see on the image. Okay. Okay. So kind of pull pull this out like so let me kind of visualize how it's looking again oh, my rotation is just too much yeah like so it's fine click enter on this and then i'm going to use something called um layer max but before i do that i will need to um let me um let me name this uh pattern and then ctrl j to make a copy of it so this will be my backup then for this i'm going to create a new layer on top select the both of them click on merge layers so now i only have one of this so it's no more a shape layer it's now it's now a, it's now a um, normal um, regular layer so um the next thing i'm going to do is to um add layer marks Go to my gradients. Go to gradient two. Then I'm going to be using from um, black to white. Click OK. And also, it should be on linear and not radar. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to um, click and drag a selection like so. As you can see, it's fading out my my um, pattern. So I need to do more of that. Let me do more of this. Yes, we're almost there. We're almost there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's just too much. Okay, this is fine. Then the next thing I need to do is just to reduce the opacity of the entire layer. Something like this should be fine. So it kind of blends in. Perfect. So the layer max uses the a value of black to white to determine how visible you want your you want your um, the object in that layer to disappear if it's at full white it's completely visible but if it's at full black it's completely invincible then anything within a range of full black and full white 
you, you get something in between like let's say 50 percent so just think of it like some kind of opacity slider whereby full black is zero percent which is full black then full white is 100 percent which is completely visible so if you, if, you, if you can use it that way um i think that should make more sense if you do it that way so the next thing i'm going to do is to um what next the text the text should be like the easiest thing to do so uh this is where we end the video so i'm just going to quickly fix the text and then come back and show you guys so what now we're back i've um, added some text so i just went to my text to text to click on the text to and then just click in here and then just type just type your stuff so that, that's going to be all for now so please um, please make sure you share this video like and subscribe i really appreciate that and then i'll see you in the next part whereby we're making the other aspect of this design and then the last part will be making a mock-up something very similar to this so please do like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next lesson uh, and also please um, i'm going to be including including the um uh the image file or better still you can get this image like this from um, pixels.com so let me just give you guys the link but don't worry, I'm going to be including the link on the description also. But yeah, it is the link for um, pixels.com. So you're going to get really clear images. So www.pexels.com. That's where you find images such like the one I such as the one I use at the background. So that'll be all for now. See you in the next lesson.